Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Limited, SpaceX offers sneak peek at their Falcon Heavy rocket. Hartzell Propeller provides tips for making a kid airplane choice. Amazon proposes an Airborne Fulfillment Center. I'm Bree Cross, it's January 4th, 2017, and this is Airborne Limited. For those who just can't get enough of all things SpaceX, the company has released a photo giving a glimpse of the Heavy Falcon booster interstage, which it hopes to be able to launch sometime in 2017. The Falcon Heavy will be made up of a Falcon 9 full thrust core stage with two Falcon 9 first stage boosters to provide additional lift. According to SpaceX, it is similar in design to the ULA Delta IV rocket, but will have twice the lifting capability. Originally planned for its launch in 2013 from California, things have been delayed because of design changes and the two launch failures of Falcon 9 rockets over the last 14 months. When the launch occurs, the Falcon Heavy will be the world's most powerful operational rocket, that is until it's eclipsed by NASA's Space Launch System, which will likely occur in 2018. If you're thinking about building a kit-built airplane, there's no such thing as too much good advice. This particularly applies when you're getting advice from someone like Hartzell Propeller. On their blog, Hartzell posted five things that you should know before you buy a kit plane. Here's a taste of what they had to say. First, not every kit manufacturer is the same. Make sure you know who the company is and that they have a proven product. Next, you'll probably get what you pay for. Ensure you are making an apples to apples comparison when it comes to price. Followed by, it's all about your workspace. Make sure the workspace is adequate and that you have the appropriate tools. Now comes the warning, watch out for modifications. Unless you're a trained aircraft design engineer, you're better off to stick with what the kit manufacturer says is the right way to build your airplane. And finally, great aircraft aren't necessarily made from great kits. Just because you enjoyed looking at or flying in an aircraft made from a kit doesn't mean that kit matches your skill level. Our thanks to Hartzell for passing along these tips. After the break, Earth to Mothership, I'd like to order a pair of socks. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Limited, send an email to jim at news.net. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has awarded a patent to Amazon for massive flying warehouses that will be a mothership for drone deliveries. Their mothership is called the Airborne Fulfillment Center, also called the AFC, which might be an acronym that's already taken. Anyway, it's based on an airship or blimp that would loiter at an altitude of about 45,000 feet and would be stocked with many popular products. CNBC reports that according to the patent application, when a customer places an order, the item would be automatically loaded into a drone, which would then fly down to make the delivery. According to the patent filing, quote, when the UAV departs the AFC, it may descend from the high altitude of the AFC using little or no power other than to guide the UAV towards its delivery destination and or to stabilize the UAV as it descends. The patent was awarded in April, but Amazon just made it public this week, along with its patent to protect delivery drones from bows and arrows. Of course, the entire scheme would need regulatory approval from the FAA. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. An aircraft that we've seen in previous years, the SAM, is apparently coming under the Zenith wing. Tell us what's happening. A great little retro-looking light sport airplane was having a tough time making it to the marketplace. 
Now the design has been picked up by Zenith Aircraft and they're moving forward with making it available. Search Sam's new uncle on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, ye read a drone to be unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show this week. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. And now Laura's going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Bree. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Drones are going to be the rage at the 2017 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this week. Ye Arita Drone from Xiaomi will introduce its new drone, which is an unusual three-rotor design. The company says it packs a lot of punch. The FAA is withdrawing a previously published advance notice of proposed rulemaking that would have placed new transponder requirements for glider operations. This means that glider operations can continue with no changes in the transponder requirement. Southwest Airlines has announced that its facilities maintenance technicians have rejected the tentative agreement negotiators reached in late October. The five-year deal would have become the group's first contract since being accreted into the Aircraft Mechanics Fraternal Association. Following an agreement reached between Emirates Airline and Rolls-Royce and a consecutive agreement between Emirates Airline and Airbus, the delivery of aircraft has been revised. The A380 delivery of six aircraft is changed from 2017 to 2018, and the six others from 2018 to 2019. Mexican airline Interjet has grounded half of its 22 Sukhoi Superjet 100 airliners following inspections of the fleet recommended by a Russian Airworthiness Directive. Writers reports that AD stemmed from the discovery of a minor fault in the horizontal stabilizer. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Back to you, Bree. Thanks, Laura. The Apollo 11 Command Module Columbia, which carried Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins on their historic trip to the moon, has been moved to the Stephen F. Udvarhaze Center in Chantilly, Virginia. Anthony Wallace, a supervisory museum specialist in the museum's collections processing unit, said, quote, This is something that's unlike anything, at least for me, that I've ever moved. Wallace explained that the spacecraft was not as complicated to move as some of the museum's aircraft, but the historical significance of the object heightened everyone's awareness. It took a team of experts months of meticulous planning for the move. Columbia has been on display in D.C. since the museum opened in 1976. The official move took place in one night, and the move took a total of 10 people, approximately six hours to complete. The module can now be seen in the Mary Baker Engine Restoration Hangar, where it will undergo final preparation for its permanent display location. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Limited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.